again. Well, I know that Monday isn't everybody's favourite day of the week, but at least it does herald the start of another five days of Master Team, so it can't be all bad, can it? We've got two teams here in the studio ready to play the game. The first team comes from Hertfordshire. Let's meet them. They are. I'm Philip Tattershaw from Hemel Hempstead. I'm a local government officer. I'm Hilary Mitchell from Hemel Hempstead. I'm a local government officer. I too am from Hemel Hempstead. My name's Richard Underwood. I'm a chartered town planner. And collectively, they play as a team called the Magic Roundabout from Hertfordshire. <laughs> and the name has nothing to do with the fact that they're great fans of Dougal, Zebedee and Florence, though I'm sure that they are, but a great deal to do with that logo that they all have on their sweatshirt and uh, something else as well. So, Hilary, perhaps you could explain. Well, the Magic Roundabout is the local name for a traffic island that we have at one end of the town, which is one large roundabout and six little roundabouts and the traffic goes both ways round the roundabout. Yes, I think I know it. I think I've been round it and been absolutely terrified by it. <laughs> well, playing opposite them, we have a team that come from Northern Ireland. Let's meet them. They are. Hello, my name is Michael McGivern from Craig Fergus in Northern Ireland, and I'm a civil servant. I'm Janet Copeland, and I'm a French teacher in Ardenvay High School in Antrim. I'm David Beattie. I also teach at Ardenvay High School in Antrim. And collectively, they're the team known as Carrick Plus One from Northern Ireland. <laughs> and the team from Carrick have already won two games in a row. It means that they're bronze medalists with an accumulative score of 93 points. In fact, they're top of our bronze medal winners at the moment. Uh, one more win, and of course, they could make it a silver medal. But uh, the Magic Roundabout would also like to have a few wins under their belt as well. So let's see what happens as the two teams meet in the first round of this game of Master Team, which is uh, Team Challenge. So teams, if you have your fingers on the buzzers and you're ready, let's play. Which British entertainer had the catchphrase here and now before your very eyes? Richard. Arthur Askey. Correct. Where is Shakespeare buried? Hillary. Stratford von Avon. Correct. Before decimalization, how many halfpennies were there in David? 480. No incorrect challenge. Bonus point to the opposition for an incorrect interruption and full question. Before decimalization, how many halfpennies were there in 10 shillings? Richard? 240. Correct. By what name was Murray Grausolt better known? Richard? Murray Curie. No. Too late. It's Madame Tussaud. Who was the British-born author and Irish patriot executed by firing squad in 19... David. Roger Casement. No incorrect challenge. Bonus point to the opposition. Full question. Who was the British-born author and Irish patriot executed by firing squad in 1922? Too late. It was Erskine Childers. What is the chemical formula for methane? David. Uh, NH3. No. Richard. C2. No, it's CH4. In Greek mythology, who was the first woman? Michael. Pandora. Correct. Which radio magazine program started with the words, once again, we stopped the mighty roar of London's traffic? Richard. London Tonight. No. Too late. It was in town tonight. Name the contemporary author and traveller whose expeditions include retracing St. Brendan's voyage from West Ireland to North America and Sinbad's voyage. Hillary. Tor Hyder. No. Incorrect challenge. Bonus point to the opposition of full question. Name the contemporary author and traveller whose expeditions include retracing St. Brendan's voyage from West Ireland to North America and Sinbad's voyage from Oman to China. <coughs> Janet. Michael Wood. No. He's a gentleman called Tim Severin. The end of that round, the scores look like this. The Magic Roundabout have seven, Carrot plus one, have three. <laughs> so for our first spotlight round, it's the Magic Roundabout who get first choice as they're in the lead at this stage. So would you like to choose a member of the Northern Ireland team, please? We'd like David, please. David, would you like to choose from classical music, television, food and drink, sport, the 1960s, current affairs? Sport, please. Sport is your spotlight subject, so if you are ready, David, you have one minute on sport and your time starts. Now, in the sporting world, what do the initials TCCB stand for? Test County Cricket Board. Correct. On what day of the year does a racehorse have its official birthday? 1st of January. Correct. With which field event do you associate athlete Willie Banks? Uh, triple jump. Correct. Which Spanish football team does Howard Kendall now manage? Athletic Bilbao. Correct. How many times did Billie Jean King win the ladies' singles at Wimbledon? Six. Correct. Which American football team won the Super Bowl four times between 1975 and 1980? It's for Steelers. Correct. Who partnered Joe Jury to win the 1987 Wimbledon mixed double titles? 
Bates. Correct. Jeremy Bates. Correct, Jeremy Bates. For what specific sporting event was an arena built at White City in 1908? Olympics. Correct. What colour is the outermost ring on an archery target? Uh, Brian. White. With which sport do you associate Permin Zubrigan? Skiing. Correct. Who, in 1985, became the first man to achieve six metres in the pole vault? Uh, Correct. Which French woman lost... <coughs> it's still yours. Which French woman lost in six Wimbledon doubles finals between 1965 and 1975? François Deux. Correct. David, at the end of that round, you have scored 22 points in the spotlight. Your team now has a total of 25. <laughs> And for those of you who were watching last week, you will know that that equals David's score in the spotlight on sport last week when he also gained 22 points, which means that he is still our highest individual scorer in any spotlight round. And if you're wondering why the Magic Roundabout chose him, it's because we ensured that they did not see that game so that they had no prior knowledge of the uh, specialist subjects of our team members. So now, Carrick, would you like to choose a member of the Magic Roundabout to go into the spotlight, please? Okay, which is Richard? Richard, would you now like to choose from classical music, television, food and drink, the 1960s or current affairs? Television, please, Angela. Television to be your spotlight subject, Richard. If you're ready, you have one minute on television and your time starts now. Who starred as Ivanhoe in the series of the same name? Roger Moore. Correct. In which series would you have found the Farnan brothers? Br the brothers. No, all creatures great and small. Who played the air raid warden in Dad's army? Bill Pertwee. Correct. What was the first name of Jessica Tate's husband in soap? Pass. Chester. Who hosts Channel 4's Countdown? Pass. Richard Whiteley. Which married couple experience a fine romance? <sighs> Pass. Judy Dench and Michael Williams. What is the name of the detective agency in Moonlighting? Pass. Blue Moon. With which country would you associate the BBC foreign correspondent Mark Tully? China. India. Who is the current presenter of Sports Night? Harry Carpenter. Steve Ryder. How many contestants take part in Every Second Counts? Six. Correct. Which program perpetrated the famous Spaghetti Harvest hoax? Panorama. Correct. Who was the first Doctor Who? William Hartnell. Correct. In which town do the Flintstones live? Bedrock. Correct. Which television series features the families Berg and Kovalec? I'm sorry, I missed the last two names. Which television series features the families Berg and Kovalec? Pass. Chateau Valiant. Richard, at the end of that round, you have scored 12 points in the spotlight. Your team now has a total of 19. <laughs> so with 19 for the Magic Roundabout, playing 25 for Carrick, six points between the teams as we come to the round that offers five, bones as a five points as a bonus for whichever team can come up with the longest word from the three letters that we're about to spin on our board. So teams, if you are ready, let's uh, spin the letters. S is the first letter of the sequence and must be the first letter of your word, followed by H and Z, and your 30 seconds starts now. Time is up, teams. Would you put your pencils down, please? And first of all, magic roundabout, how many letters in your word? Thirteen, Angela. Thank you. Carrick, how many letters in your word, please? Seventeen. Thank you. Magic roundabout, could I have your word and would you spell it, please? The word is Scheherazadean. Yes. Spelt? S-C-H-E-H-E-R-A-Z-A-D-I-A-N. Thank you very much. And Carrick, your word and spell it, please. Schizophrenically. S-C-H-I-Z-O-P-H-R-E-N-I-C-A-L-L-Y. -L -L Thank you. 
Well, the audience gave a bit of a groan when they saw those three letters, S, H, and Z, and they do look a bit of a pig, don't they? But uh, teams didn't worry about them at all, because uh, 14 letters, in fact, in the word from the magic roundabout, not 13, and the word that they offered us was Scheherazadean, while 17 letters came in the word from Carrick, and that was schizophrenically. Well, uh, our gentleman with the dictionaries, and this week it's Mr. Bill Trumbull, he has taken a look in his... Uh, 22 dictionaries, I think it is, that he's got. Schizophrenically certainly is there. But Scheherazadean, I'm afraid, Magic Roundabout, it's a lovely word, and we think that you did a brave job in trying to make it up from the name Scheherazade, but uh, it doesn't exist anywhere in any of the dictionaries, so unfortunately it doesn't count. But Schizophrenically anyway has more letters, and so that picks up five bonus points. So the team score for Carrick is now 30 points. And that means we go back to another spotlight round, and this time it is Northern Ireland who get first choice. And on the Magic Roundabout team, they can put either Phil or Hilary into the spotlight. We'll have Phil, please. Phil, would you like to choose from classical music, food and drink, the 1960s, or current affairs? 1960s, please. Okay, Phil. If you're ready, you have one minute in the spotlight answering questions on the 1960s, and your time starts... Now, who was brought from Moscow Zoo to meet Chi Chi in London? Anna. Correct. Name the block of flats which partially collapsed in London's Canning Town in May 1968. Ronan Point. Correct. Who did Edward Heath succeed as leader of the Conservative Party? Sir Alec Douglas Hume. Correct. In 1963, a communications hotline was installed. Which two famous buildings did it connect? The White House and the Kremlin. Correct. What swapped sides in Sweden on September the 3rd, 1967? Pass. It was traffic. Which New Zealander won Olympic gold in the 800 metres in 1960 and 1964? Peter Snell. Correct. The first scheduled commercial hovercraft service began in 1962 between Wallasey and which Welsh resort? Pass. It was real. Who had a number one hit with Those Were the Days? Mary Hopkins. Correct. Which 1961 film was the last for both Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe? Pass. The Misfits. Rosemary Franklin in 1961 was the first British... It's still yours. Rosemary Franklin in 1961 was the first British winner of which title? Pass. Ah, uh, you'll remember when I tell you the crown, the sash, the orb and the tears? Miss World. <laughs> so at the end of that round, you've scored 12 points in the spotlight for your team and the total is now 31. Now, Magic Roundabout, you can put either Michael or Janet into the spotlight for Northern Ireland. We choose Janet, please. Janet, would you like to choose from classical music, food and drink, or current affairs? I'll try food and drink, please. Okay. That's to be your spotlight subject for one minute, Janet. So if you're ready, your time starts. Now, what are calamares more commonly known as? Squid. Correct. What are black, green, and oolong types of? Bean. Tea. There are three dried herbs in a classic bouquet garni. Name two. Basil? Uh, no. No, it's uh, parsley, thyme, or bay leaf. Which Western Chinese style of regional cooking is noted for its strong flavors and hot spices? Sichuan. Correct. Where would you find tapas? In Spanish bar. Correct. What is a ramekin? It's a small dish. Correct. For which food is the French region of Perigord especially famous? Uh, truffles. Correct. What kind of vegetable is a calabrese? Type of broccoli. Correct. Which drink consists of cassis and white wine? Kheer. Correct. What is the principal ingredient of the soup borscht? Beetroot. Correct. Which berry is a hybrid of the blackberry, the raspberry, and the loganberry? Tayberry. Correct. What pudding derives its name from the French for white food? Blamange. Correct. <laughs> from which part of the cinnamon tree do we obtain cinnamon sticks? You may still answer. From which part of the cinnamon tree do we obtain cinnamon sticks? The bark. Correct. At the end of that round, Janet, you've scored 22 points in the spotlights. <laughs> well, that means that the Northern Ireland team score goes up to 52. It also means that Janet, with a score there of 22, is now equal highest scorer in the spotlight with her teammate, David. Right, we come to our final round in this game. <laughs> And it's team challenge. So, teams, if you would like to put your fingers on the buzzers and you're ready, let's play. What is the total value of all four railway stations in Monopoly? 
Richard. 800 pounds. Correct. In ballet, how many basic positions of the feet are there? Hilary? Five. Correct. Who designed Queen Elizabeth II's wedding dress? <phone rings> Janet. Norman Hartnell. Correct. What is the title in English of the Communist Party newspaper in China? <phone rings> Michael. Sorry, it's gone. No. Phil? People's Daily. Correct. What was the actual name of the character Mr. Chips in the book Goodbye, Mr. Chips? <laughs> Too late, it's Mr. Chipping. What is a libretto? <phone rings> Hilary? It's the words of a musical. Correct. Which Greek word meaning kingfisher can be used as an adjective meaning calm? Hillary. Halcyon. Correct. What were the surnames of the American criminal duo Bonnie and Clyde? David. Parker and Barrow. Correct. Yes, they were. Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow. At the end of that round, let's take a look at our final score line. The magic roundabout have 40. Carrick plus one have 56. And that final scoreline of 56 is now the highest individual score of any team in a game. It beats the Master Cutlers from Sheffield by just one point. They had 55. It also, of course, means that uh, Carrick plus one becomes silver medalists now with three games in a row. And if my very quick maths is accurate, it means that they've got 149 points on our leaderboard. So they will be staying with us. The Magic Roundabout, we're going to send you back to that demonic system that you have in Hertfordshire. But thank you for coming to play with us here on Master the team. Bye-bye. An opportunity now to welcome a team from Yorkshire. They are. My name is Dave Trent. I'm a second year occupational therapy student from the College of Ripon and York St. John in York. I'm Frances Gisborne. I'm an occupational therapy student from York. And my name's Kim Dent, and I'm also a second-year OT student from St John's in York. And collectively, they play as a team called the Otteds from York. <laughs> from York and Riffin, the old family seat, you know, but uh, carries no sway with me. The Otteds, but I'm sure that they'll stay very cool, calm and collected as they play our team from Northern Ireland who are now silver medalists with an accumulative score of 149. But they will have to start level, no points to begin with on the board, but I'm sure that will soon change as I ask our teams to put their fingers on the buzzers and we go into our first round, which is team challenge. So if you're ready, teams, let's play. Where in Paris is the tomb of the unknown soldier? <coughs> David. Arc de Trail. Correct. What are the names of the two bones in the forearm? <coughs> David. Uh, Too speak. late. Kim? Radius and the Ulm. Correct. Who led the Mormons when they first settled in Salt Lake, Kim? Brigham Young. Correct. What was the sequel to the book Gentlemen Prefer Blondes? Too late, it was Gentlemen Marry Brunettes. Who was the evil god of Egyptian myth, the murderer? Kim? Fourth. No, incorrect challenge. Bonus point to the opposition, full question. Who was the evil god of Egyptian myth, the murderer of Osiris? <coughs> David? No, it was Set or Seth. Who is the cartoonist who is married to actress Jane Asher? Janet? Charles Garth. Correct. Which of the four Gospels is thought to be by the same writer as the Acts of the Apostles? <coughs> Michael? Look. Correct. Who is the Lord of the Isles? <coughs> David? Prince Charles. Correct. What is the full name of the trade union TSSA? <coughs> Kim? Transport Salaried Staffs Association. Correct. <coughs> the end of that first round. Let's take a look at the scoreline. The Otteds have got five, Carrick have nine. <laughs> that means we go into our first spotlight round with Carrick choosing and the Otteds. Well, it could be any one of the three of them. Will we'll have Francis, please? Francis, would you like to choose from television, current affairs, sport, the 1960s, food and drink, or pop music? Uh, television, please. Television, it will be for one minute, Francis. So if you're ready, your minute in the spotlight starts. Now, what was Tom and Barbara's surname in The Good Life? Pass. Good. Who are the two team captains on A Question of Sport? Bill Beaumont and Emmeline Hughes. Correct. What is the name of Dot's troublemaking son in EastEnders? Nick. Correct. Who presents the late night chat show The Last Resort? Um, Jonathan Ross. Correct. Who wrote the books on which the television series A Horseman Riding By and To Serve Them All My Days were based? 
pass. R.F. Delderfield, in which family would you find Gomez, Morticia, and Uncle Fester? Uh, the Munsters. No, the Adams family. Who or what is Flying Lady in the series starring Frank Windsor? Pass. It's a Rolls Royce. What is the title of the futuristic puppet series about a crack fighting force defending Earth against Zelda? A pass. The Terror Hawks. Which ex monkey was Ina Sharple's grandson? David Jones. Correct. In 1960, Shakespeare's history plays were transmitted in historical order. What was the series called? Pass. And it was called An Age of Kings. Francis, at the end of that round, you've scored eight points in the spotlight, so your team now has a total of 13. <laughs> now, York, would you like to put one of the Northern Ireland team into the spotlight, please? We'll have Janet, please. Janet, would you like to choose from current affairs, sport, the 1960s, food and drink, or pop music? Food and drink, please. That's to be your spotlight subject for one minute, Janet. So if you're ready, your time in the spotlight starts. Now, in an Italian restaurant, what word is used for the hors d'oeuvre? Antipasto. Correct. To which family do gherkins belong? Uh, marrow. Cucumber. What kind of nut grown in this country is sometimes known as the Kentish cob? Here's a nut. Correct. Which beverage is made from the leaves of Camellia sinensis? Tea. Correct. What name is given to the edible entrails of poultry or game? Offal. No, giblets. If you ordered champignon in a French restaurant, what would you be served with? Mushrooms. Correct. What color is the skin of a Bradenham ham? Pink. Black. Which yellow Italian herb liqueur is traditionally used in a Harvey Wallbanger? Contro. Galliano. What flavor is Mornay sauce? Cheese. Correct. What do Americans call broad beans? Pass. Shell beans. Name the fruit of the blackthorn tree. Pass. The slow. What is the Italian word for Dublin Bay prawns? Gambas. No, they're called scampi. Janet, at the end of that round, you've scored 10 points in the spotlight, so your team now has a total of 19. <laughs> so we've got just six points between our teams as we go into our middle round, which is, of course, in a spin. So let's get the computer to uh, spin the letters, please. Why is the first letter of the sequence and must be the first letter of your word, followed by O and Y in that order? Your 30 seconds starts now. Time is up, teams. Would you put your pencils down, please? And first of all, York, how many letters in your word? Ten. Thank you. And Northern Ireland, how many letters in your word, please? Eight. Thank you. Right, well, what I'm going to do now is um, take those words away from the team. I'm going to lock them away in our safe overnight, and we're going to come back tomorrow and find out what the words are and where that five bonus points is going to end up on our scoreboard. Why don't you join us and see what happens, too? Till tomorrow. For